in society today, a lot of people see homelessness as what they see on television or in the movies. Mm -hmm. But the reality is there are some really wonderful people who just happen to fall on hard economic times and circumstances. I try to keep myself in a position where when encountering other people, I don't give them the impression that I'm homeless. I try not to look homeless. I try not to be in a position where people can look at me in, the, in that light. You know, I mean, appearance is everything. And first impressions make a big difference. And you'd be surprised how many people you may meet in a homeless shelter that just by talking to them on the street, if you weren't in a shelter, you'd never know they were in a homeless shelter. It's just a matter of their dignity and the way they carry themselves. I knew once I got here, I was um, homeless, but I just didn't feel the reality of it until last night when I lost my bed space and I was out in the rain. I um, sat in a bus station and the security guard from there told me that I had to leave and that hurt me so bad because I just kept asking myself, is this a bad dream? And you have no one to depend on, but just yourself and God in the streets. And I just prayed that God would put a hedge around me and protect me because it, Philadelphia is a dangerous place to be wandering. Yeah. And um, it's just been a, an experience. Um, you know, homeless people have been around for forever. <laughs> That's like, like telling dogs they can't exist no more and something. Like, people are gonna be homeless. You know, everybody's gonna have a bad situation and, and, and they don't think about it like this. They could lose all their money and be sleeping in a shelter. It only takes one, like, it only takes one mistake and, and you're at the bottom and you're like, and you always say, well, that'll never be me. <laughs> if you lose all your money in your house and whatever else you got, do you have no, 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 nothing else to do but jump to a shelter? Yeah. And and then it was like it could be them in a hot second. They look down on homeless people, but it could be them in a situation on their mother or their father or, or someone close to them. And they need to think about that. I'm coming down off the methadone, which is a, everybody knows what that drug is. Um, slowly but surely, my future plans is to get in business with my father again, and get back and you know, he tells me every time he sees me, you know. You're looking better. Sometimes he says I look worse, but it's the with you know it's the symptoms I'm going through. Everybody goes through a you know a withdrawal symptoms differently, and like some people think that methadone is not clean. Me personally, I do because I'm not buying a little blue bag of dope on the worst neighborhood in the world. Rat poison. You don't know what's in that stuff. At least this is monitored by the government. It's clean, but it's still synthetic. Heroin. I'm grateful for methadone, but I'm at the point now where even these people are helping me here. They give me bed rest. When I go out for a couple of days, if I'm looking for work, looking for work or whatever, and I come back, I, they give me bed rest, thank God, because they know what I'm going through. Because you have some recovering people working here, which is, is refreshing. Because, you know, you get people that just know by the book, they don't know what they're talking about. But you get, you get somebody that... First hand experiences. Yeah, you know, first hand experiences. They know where to send you to send you for like uh, meetings and stuff like that. Even the people that I've met here, a couple of Martin Recovery, and they did help me. I got five beautiful children, three girls and two boys. They're gorgeous, they're very intelligent. But the thing is, I, my son, he was supposed to go to UCLA college. And he accepted him and everything, they accepted him. And he turned him down. And um, I, I asked him, why are you, you turning him down? Why you, why are you just this big school now? Like, you go out there and go to college, get a good education, everything. He said, Mom, he said, I can't go out there. And I asked him why you can go out there, and he said, because when the crack kills me, he wants to be there for my funeral, and he don't want to fly hundreds of miles in to be, to see his mom's funeral. And I was like, what? I was like, he's in a big school, so he could be at my funeral. Like, that, that's crazy, uh, and I, that's when I realized, like, yo, like he's 18, and, and he has this chance to get this big education at this big school, and he's going to a local college so he can be close to me. I would think that the city should look at as far as, like, increasing the number of shelters, 
you know, if they can. Um, basically also as far as the services that are that, uh, made available to those that are homeless, you know, as far as uh, social services, you know, that uh, through funding, if they, they can be increased, that would be helpful as well. Well, I'm going to go ahead and then start looking for full-time employment again. You know, so because with this economy as it is right now, it's, uh, it's certainly you know a little bit difficult. You know, so far it's just been offers of uh, part-time employment. So, you know, want to get a full-time job so I can get back on my feet again. This is just an obstacle in which has to be overcome. I think it's actually a pretty prevalent problem considering like the, the wealth of our city. And um, like last year, we have this thing called the um, like the tenth grade project or whatever. And when you're a sophomore, you have to complete like a Philadelphia project where you study current events in the city. And um, one of the things I ended up studying was violence, and it was like I don't know, sort of related to um, the homelessness issue. And um, yeah, we took like a look at like some of the programs that the city offers in terms of like shelters and like soup kitchens and stuff like that. And to be honest, I don't think all of it's being used to um, get resources to people all the time. So at least that was my sense for doing the research. We do have a lot of abandoned buildings that we could actually fix up for the homelessness. I mean, we do have empty lots that we could actually build something there for the homelessness instead of more high rises and, and stuff. And you know, I mean, give them somewhere to go. I mean, we're so worried about building high rises for people come tourists coming in but we're not worrying about the, the people that we have in our own city well I mean my, my first thought is how could you not think that it's sad to see somebody who's truly living on the street uh, I always think this is a real person this is a story I want I want to know the story what what happens in a person's life where they get to the point where they are truly homeless. Just to piggyback on that a little bit, I think that um, you know, raising kids in the city, we, we see that every day. And one of the things that Rachel and I feel is very important is that our children see that, that uh, homeless people are people that are really no different from us. They might have a different story that Paul is talking about, but at the end of the day we're talking about people who have needs and we're people that have needs as well um, so that's that's the thing we want our kids to understand is that we're looking at people not just objects we need to get around which is the temptation to do I mean I do give them money if I have it you know especially if I'm in a good mood which is actually a wrong thing to do but you know some days you're feeling good so you give and some days you don't feel like being bothered which is the bad thing so I mean if you have a dime a nickel any loose change or a dollar bill or whatever I mean Buy him a cup of coffee. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, it actually makes your day a lot better.